the tour is back on. I got a question for you. Are you living life or is life living you? How bad do you want to be successful? Are you ready to level up in life? Are you ready to go to that next level? Are you sick of being average? I ask you again, are you living life or is life living you? Less than unstoppable, the international world tour. Dr. Billy Osbrooks, coming to a city near you. I'll be teaching a four hour, life changing seminar on the art of greatness. Arise, champion. Every city will sell out. Get your tickets now. We are kicking the tour back off June 14th in Los Angeles, California. We are coming to 20 cities between now and the end of the year. And we ain't stopping there. We're taking a message to Europe. October 25th, London. Get your tickets now at blessedandunstoppable.com. Ooh, we I'm excited this week, man. I have somebody uh, that I am bringing to you that has brought so much more than positivity he's brought truth into my life he's brought fire into my life uh, every single morning for i would say the last two years i might have, might have missed maybe a dozen days but this audio have, has spoken over my life this man has created content that has helped me to be able to learn the bible to be able to kind of walk out my faith walk i'm so excited for you guys to be able to hear his story hear a little bit more about him he's going to teach us some things today he's going to teach us the art of greatness and the person uh, that i'm talking to you about right now his name is dr billy alls brooks he's created tons and tons of incredible viral videos on youtube lots of content he's got an amazing book called blessed and unstoppable it's a uh, 31 day workbook that you go through that really just kind of walks you through the art of greatness and the promises that god has made to us so without further ado i'm in i've always wanted to say this i'm in the studio with dr billy alls god is man. good Dude, man thank welcome, you for having man. me on brother thank you for having me man. on man and we're also here with king connor so he's gonna help king us C. yeah What's up, brother? man he's gonna help us uh make sure that i get out of dr billy alls brooks way man because i know uh and i'm a believing that that there is a message uh that you're gonna share today that that is specifically for someone so before we get into this man i want to bless this time that we have here together dear heavenly father uh, thank you for this opportunity thank you for this platform holy spirit just be with us today and just allow the conversations that king connor and myself and dr billy allsbrooks have today to just bring hope to people uh and just a message of hope in and maybe a dark part of their life that nobody else knows about just to bring message to them right now so holy spirit thank you for this opportunity thank you for this show and thank you for the ears uh that are hearing it right now it's in your name we pray amen amen so dr billy man so i guess the first place i want to start with you man is is the opportunity that I just had a couple days ago to be live and in person in the hot zone in LA. It was, it was wild. I thought your event was going to get canceled, but in full faith, man, you set the date, you showed up and you showed out and uh, it was really, really powerful experience to be able to sit front row for that. Thank man. you, brother. Appreciate it, man. God is good, man. God is good. You know, in times like this, we have to learn on the dark, mm. you know, we have to learn to, to walk when we cannot see, you know, when we cannot see the things that um are promised, the things that we have inside of us and that the outside world is not reflecting it in any way, shape or form. We still have to push through. Mm. We still got to keep walking. That's that's what determines the, the champions, the, the leaders, the greats from the others is the amount that a person can walk in the dark without having to see something. You know, if you, the, the, the higher up the ladder that you want to go, the more you have to learn to own the dark. Right on. What what was the, uh, and I guess I'll just kind of like backtrack to, uh, or I don't want to say backtrack, fast forward from us having an opportunity to spend time on Sunday to right now. Now you're in my home, had an opportunity to get mobbed by my girls oh, yeah. uh, and see the home. Um, man, dude, it's just, it's really good to have you in, in my home. And how funny was it when you met my girls when they were like, hey, hey, will you say blessed and stop it? Will, will you say champion for me? <laughs> 
<laughs> very humbling, man. I, I just praise God for, for things like that to, you know, come all the way from years ago. Some of the things I was, you know, speaking into a mic at that time with no followers. You know, there was, right. no, there was no big, you know, entourage or nothing. But you just trust God for those things. And I just get in there with, you know, on the mic and would say right. what he told me to say. And then say, okay, well, I'm sending out there. I got, you know, like 50 people following the fan. And most mm. of those are family. Right. right? You know, yeah. nobody's really listening. Right. But you never know what God's going to do. It's it's amazing what 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 he does. I love it that Drew Brees could come over to my house, walk into my house, sit on the couch, and my daughter would just be like, that's Drew Brees. But when you showed up in my house, like yesterday when I told them like, hey, Dr. Billy Alice Brooks is going to come over to our house and he's going to be here from like noon until probably like 8 p.m. And like, wait, he's coming to our house, like blessed and unstoppable champion. And, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, did they not all four of them screamed? They They screamed. So the point that I'm trying to make is, man, I'm just really proud of who is sensationalized in my home and for what reasons they're sensationalized. Because, yes, you have, like, an incredible gift on the mic, but it wasn't always that way for you. You know what I mean? You had an incredible gift on the mic, but as you say, you used to be MVP for the other team. So. I mean, I guess we just start there, man. I know, like, panic attacks have been, like, um, and anxiety have been, honestly, something that that has stolen years away from mm-hmm. your life. And I would love to get into those those types of adversities because where you are right now, man, dude, there's so many people that I know that have achieved way more than me that love your stuff. God, you know good. what I mean? And so you're leading a lot of people that you don't even know you're leading that are so much more successful than what you and I could ever hope to be. God's so good. really, man, I just wanted to honor you with that because you have blessed my family. You've blessed me. You've accelerated my journey, my knowledge, uh, the way I speak, the language that we speak in our home. It's champion. You know Amen. what I mean? And a lot of that influence was the content that you worked so hard to create when nobody was around, when you didn't have any followers and you were just kind of like walking out God's calling for you. The video that, that I play the most audio over myself is a video that's like like five years old. You know, the power right. within you. That's right. my favorite one. And it's not something that you've created recently. It was something that you created when nobody else was around right. in the right. shadows. And it's still impacting people. That one, I was actually going through the struggle, too. The, the, the material on there, I was going through my own struggles. I had to remind myself every day, hey, you know, don't forget the power that's in you. Because the enemy was, you know, when I was going through panic attacks. The enemy was always, you know, mm. seemed to be in control. Mm. You know, and I, I forgot who I was and forgot what was on the inside of me. So I would, I would constantly quote, you know, for the Lord didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power mm. and of love and of sound mind. And I, I would stick to each one of those words, power, mm. love, and a sound mind. You know, love being God in the center of that, man, that holds those two together, the power and the sound mind. Without God in the center of our life, we're, we're in a state of chaos. So I, when I did that message, man, you know, some some of these um, messages that really resonate is because I was, you know, I was going through the struggle when I made it. Mm. You know, it's, it's not just me trying to, you know, hype somebody up or you know say something positive, but it's like real struggle mm. that came was birthed out of the struggle. What mm. I call product of the struggle. Right. So you know, one one of the uh, one of the pieces of content that you just created recently, I think probably in the last like six weeks, was called Wine and Roses. Yeah, yeah. And it was a little bit. It was different than what we have been re- listening to recently. It was a rap song, and then it was you telling the story right. of the struggle with your dad and his addiction, and and how every you know every two weeks like clockwork. Yeah. Um, my son loved that, but I loved it too because a lot of the content that you've created is for other people, and you haven't shared as much of your personal life because all the mm-hmm. content's about everybody else. Right, right. So me and Ace have really enjoyed hearing more of like your personal struggle, and I feel like uh, those, those I feel are, like I'm not the only one. Those though, are man. challenging because yeah, you're being sure. vulnerable like that, you yeah. know. The, and going through that that particular message brought up stuff from years ago. Yeah, you know stuff that we we forced down and, and yeah, but try it to hide allows, from. You and know? I know you know yeah. this, but it allows other people to attach not just on to the story that you're telling them, right, and the champion. Right. That it actually allows them to attach onto you because they're like, right. man, 
I struggle with addiction or my dad struggled with addiction or mm -hmm. my uncle struggled with addiction. It's just like that, man. Right, right. You know what I mean? That's and, why I did it because, yeah. you know, inside I'm like somebody else is going through this, oh. the same struggle. Yeah, and a, a lot, lot of times more than just one. They see the finished product of us and they think, okay, well, you know, we're here and maybe they're going through the struggle and they can't see how mm. to get to where we're at. But we're like, oh, hold on. We, we were there too. Yeah. You know, we so went it's through more the of the storytelling, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I guess the point that I'm trying to make is it was more of the storytelling of your life mm. that drew – us in and it helps that like the way you say every word is really cool like the a says when i speak champion over him like when we say god around here warrior of god it's god. all it's a yeah, it's right. always that's just right. like Billy. It needs to be said uh, with respect when you yeah, say god put some respect right, on his right. name the world doesn't say god's name right you gotta say it with power nobody you, you puts know? more respect on jesus's right. name right. than billy does that's right. man <laughs> They make him seem like he's got a, you know, suit on and never been his hands and, you know, out there working. Yeah. That's not God. God has been building the whole time. So when I said I try to make sure that I emulate, you know, his, yeah, his greatness. Man. You do that. You do that well, man. I was really, I really was, man. I was really impressed with, I mean, if you just want to say it flat out, I'm impressed with your endurance on Sunday. Dude, you ripped the mic for three and a half hours. <laughs> like, full out like you say 120 beast mode that's what you gave man i was oh, really good. i oh, was really good. impressed because I, I speak also and i know how much it demands of me to speak because i speak boldly in 120 like you do but man i'm really impressed that you can do it for three and a half hours because i've never done it longer than 90 minutes and when i was done for 90 minutes it took it out of me man the ones i, I use they have the hardest with it when i'm put on a short time Really? You know, yeah, because I have to condense content. Like, I love just, you know, once the spirit lights up, it, it, you know, the whole body starts to feel this um, kingdom high mm. that doesn't go. It's not like, you know, weed or the other drugs, alcohol is temporary, you know, quick high and, you know, and you crash. It's a constant overwhelming high. Mm. And when you're in your calling, when they're sending you your calling, there's, there's nothing that compares to it. No alcohol, no sex, no drugs. Nothing compares to being in the center of your calling that, you know, God has on your life. And when you get in it, you don't want to leave. Mm. My saddest part is saying, you know, it's over today. Goodbye. Like that's yeah. the, I'm like, ah, oh. now yeah. it's got, you know, you a couple days tell. later before I speak again, you know, and yeah. this thing is just so, uh, so amazing. Once that spirit activates on huh. the inside, you know, well, take take me back in your story, man. I really want to get into uh, this this PTSD. This, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, because when you spoke on Sunday, man, I, I had no idea that it was that big mm -hmm. a part of your struggle because we don't hear as much about it. And you actually talk about PTSD a lot, mm -hmm. but you but I never knew that it was something that paralyzed you for years. So mm -hmm. I would love to get in to talk about like how was that created and how did you shift out of it. Well. For 17 years, I was in the music business. Mm. I had my own radio show, music producer, on-air personality, songwriter. Um, had songs on Billboard, produced for Golden Platinum Max. And um, I was chasing that Hollywood lifestyle. Mm. You know, the wild women, the fame, the money, the accolades, the cars, the houses, all that. And I did it at a high level. Mm. You know, the grind was put in me when I was little. So I understood what it you know took to, to do big things and, and dream big and, and pursue greatness. But um, God had a plan, a different plan, you know, and my mother had kept on praying for me, praying for me, praying for me. And I'm out, you know, promoting this drug lifestyle, this thug lifestyle from the, from the rap for years. As you mentioned earlier, I was the number one promoter for the enemy. Mm, you know, the, mm -hmm. my mouth was the gift and the enemy had it at that time. And I was going hard for him, mm. you know, but God intervened, you know, in, in a perfect way what the devil meant for home God made good my father had passed away in front of me on a Sunday mm -hmm. he had a stroke 12 days before but on, a, on Sunday 12 days later he had a blood clot in his leg and died right in front of me so I saw like the last 10 minutes of his life mm. I saw him struggle to breathe I saw the transition um, the helplessness all that stuff and it just really rocked my mind you know, I wasn't, you know, 10 minutes, you know, earlier. It's a beautiful day like it is today. Everything's great. My dad's getting better from the stroke. 10 minutes later, he is gone and my mind just couldn't deal with it. Mm. You know, it just really just shut down, imploded. The darkness came in. Mm. The enemy followed mm. and he had me for the next seven years. He had every thought I had was uh, the fear of dying. This PTSD, post-traumatic um, stress from that event 
just rocked me and began to steal everything that I had worked for in the music business for 17 years. All the money I put up, all all the accolades and stuff, he used, began to chip away at it until seven years later, everything was gone. Mm. I mean, I, I went from being on stage in front of 20,000 people rapping mm. to being in a bedroom for two weeks at a time, scared to come out. That I was mm. going to have a panic attack. I went to the hospital 12 times in nine months mm. thinking I was going to die I'd run every time you know like I'd get a twitch in my arm I'd say oh I'm stroking and my mind would really really believe it mm -hmm. like you couldn't tell me otherwise I said my last words um, to my wife 30 something times thinking I was dying like I, I love you babe I'm you know I'm sorry you know wow. whatever I'm, I'm thinking I'm dying just like you know my father did whether it was you know my mind would lock on to something if you know you came in and you mentioned somebody that had cancer my mind would lock on to that maybe I got it mm. it would start trying to protect me you know, it's like, and your mind would start yeah. to convince yourself yeah. that you have what people are talking yeah. about. And I'd be in a doctor's office. They'd, they'd show me the stats, the extra. Oh, you, you're, you're fine. And I stood, my mind would not believe it. Uh. Because 10 minutes before with my dad, he was fine. 10 minutes he wasn't. So I always thought that at any given moment, you could be out of here. Uh. Like even though everything's fine right now, that doesn't mean 10 minutes later, you're not going to be gone. Right. So I could not get my spirit, my mind to just calm down and get back into order. Mm. I tried everything. I went, you know, six, seven therapists. I went to grief shares, to programs, to um, counseling, you name it. Went to the Harvard and Yale type of therapist, to the local therapist. I mean, everybody. I tried anything and everything. I was so desperate to get my life back, but nothing worked. I and mean, you and you were a, a Christian during this seven-year kind yeah, of yeah. like wilderness period, right? You know, I bought in to... to to God when I was young my mother and them raised me my mother and father raised me in the church uh -huh. but you know I had strayed right once I got about my teenage years you know okay the being going to church just wasn't and at that time cool you know there wasn't the people I was looking up you know looking up to just weren't in church mm -hmm. the gangster rappers and all that weren't in church so my mom gave me the you know option when I got you know of age you know you can come or or not it's your choice at this point I've raised you now it's you know your your decision but I always believed in God mm. I mean I'd be rapping in, in the most gangster environment you could you know mm. rap in I mean, the last five shows I did they shot the club up mm. literally gangs and stuff like that and you know, nothing to do with me but I'm in this environment right. and um, I always believed in God my actions just did not reflect it you couldn't tell me God didn't exist mm. I'd carry that Bible I started reading the Bible around 2001 2002 and started carrying it everywhere but my actions my mouth still had not changed mm. you know my actions were, were still reflecting the enemy's plan we you know i said it the other day at the, at the the event before i'd go out to perform i'd be in a strip club because i had the number one strip club song um called pop appeal and me and my crew would be back in a circle praying before we went out to do the song like i mean we were we were in serious kind of torn yeah there. we were little, seriously little torn, torn. There. yeah we were seriously torn but i mean we thought hey we're you know we're doing the right thing we're praying before we go out in this environment right. but you know god knows mm. he knew what he was about to do mm. you know we were just babies babies mm. you know baby baby followers just waiting to be fed and awakened mm. and um this this trial and tribulation that i went through with the panic attacks provided that opportunity mm. so god turned that crisis into preparation into molding to the boot camp for doing what i do today right because if i'm going to go out and i'm going to speak to people that are going through life struggles real situations you know stage four cancer verge of suicide on the on verge of bankruptcy going to prison for life whatever if he's going to send me out to speak to them people i need to understand who i am speaking to mm. right so i i must go through my own struggle to at least have some uh comprehension of the mindset that these people are going to be in when i go mm. you know, otherwise i'm not going to be able to reach them mm. you know so he raised me you know through the war through the struggle and began to pull me out of it you know i got to the end of me right right and uh one day i was out on a prayer walk walking around my neighborhood and um i would do this prayer walk once you know once i figured out i was having panic attacks and i wasn't dying i still could not stop the panic attacks but um i would go i'd have all this energy on the inside when these panic attacks would happen mm -hmm. so i just put my shoes on start walking around walk my block. Up. yeah it was like a one mile block so i'd go out there and start yelling at god mad at God mm. furious you know all different kind of emotions but uh, finally I got out there and I was like you know this is years now and I haven't got any better I lost all my money the whole entourage the friends all of them were gone from the music world mm. and it was just me and uh, my wife and the little dog that was it 
So I'm out there with God one day and I'm like, you know, it's been years. I can't even remember normalcy. Mm. You know, being able to go somewhere without having to worry about a panic attack. I don't even mm. know what that's like. Mm. But I said, you know, if you don't heal me, I'm done. Mm. Because I've tried everything. You know, first we tried on our own. I, I, I've tried everything. I've hustled and grinded with therapy. You know, I tried to apply sports and and, right. and, and the grind to therapy. It don't work that way. But, you know, I, I said, I've tried everything I know how to do. I've been dedicated, committed, read every book I could read. It's just not working. I'm at the end of me. And if you don't help me, I'm done. Mm. And I said, at this point, I don't even have anything else to give you. Right? It's just me. So here's the deal I make. I cut a deal with him. You know, I said, look, if you heal me, all I got to offer you is I'll go out and tell people who did it. Mm. And that's what he needed. That's what he needed. Now, here's the here's the, the catch to the story, though. Because, you know, you, you come to God and we think everything just happens right away. It, did, it still didn't happen right away. Mm. But he, it began to get better one day at a time. Mm. Now, slowly, for seven, and yeah. for seven years it got worse. Right, worse, worse. right. I so mean, was it completely. progressive or was it like your dad died? And sorry to interrupt. But when your dad died, was it like I went from doing – rap shows with 20,000 mm -hmm. people confident mm -hmm. killing it to I just saw my my dad die now my next show like ah, I can't do it I couldn't even do one anymore because like so you did my do dad shows was a musician that. right okay. my mother and both of them were big in, in music and uh when I would go in the studio and hear the music it began you know because music is emotional right it would just bring me to tears you know and it was just i was writing stuff but it was dark and it was like nobody's you know what i mean like okay it, it was just stuff that i couldn't couldn't really package up commercially like that and i was such in a bad place 2008 i don't remember hardly anything it was like a just a dark mem you know depression and you never struggled with drugs or alcohol nah, during any nah, of that time because nah. you know as i mentioned that's lucky before, man because that's where everybody goes that's where i went you know, like drugs, alcohol, women, mm -hmm. when I'm like broken or right. I feel like I've achieved something, but I don't feel better about myself. I feel I was like that's aware where everybody goes. I was aware of that because. Why didn't you go growing there? Up, growing up, my dad was an alcoholic mm. and I saw things that I, you know, I was like, I want to, his dad was an alcoholic. Even All in my the uncles, misery, you right. still didn't go there. Well, it had been burned in me so early. Like wow, I, I made, a, I made a promise to mom too. I was like, I'm not, I'm going to break the cycle. Like all, all the men, you know, had been, you know, alcohol had, you know, ruined them or taken over their lives in, in different ways. And when I saw my dad go through this and my mother stroke, I'm like, I'm not going to do that. Now, in high school, I still touched it. I still drank and sipped a little bit, smoked a little weed, did a little, but it was never really the thing. Because in the back of my mind was like, you know, you can't do this like everyone else. You know, okay. because it's in so your you blood. Knew, you knew you were, yeah, and you I knew, were still disciplined. Yeah. So I, well, maybe, I mean, maybe it's just because I'm just like obsessive. So once I find something that that I like, like lifting weights, look at my arms, bro. Right, you right, know what right, I mean? right, right. And I'm not saying that to be funny. Well, it's with it's with drugs too. Like, I had, you know, it's, there's different kinds of drugs. Mine was the fame. Mine was the women. Mm -hmm. Mine was the you know pursuit of the greatness too. The hive, like mm -hmm. taking you know songs out of your mind and putting them in you know on paper and then taking them in the studio and watching them bloom and that was kind of the drug you know mm -hmm. the hustling the grinding but um during this period um 2008 was a complete blur don't even remember the year mm -hmm. you know the only thing i remember 2008 is my grandfather got diagnosed with cancer terminal cancer 2009 is really when the panic attack started mm -hmm. because as my grandfather got worse it started you know to descend it was like it was stirring up my he's gonna die like my dad he's gonna die like my dad and then i started having panic attacks all the way up to when he died i was supposed to be a pallbearer for, for his casket and i was having panic attacks while i was carrying the, the, wow. the casket this is when it really kicked in and that was the first time i went to the hospital was after his funeral mm. i went you know i, I was like they so wanted it, me, it hit yeah, instant, right then man. well i mean for a year it was dark i didn't have panic attacks i was in depression right. which is a lower you know lower state where you can't even move Okay. I'd been moved up the state to fear, uh, you know, uh, on, on the ladder of okay. um, progression. But it was, you know, this this fear thing just really, really consumed me. And I went from having like one panic attack, you know, two every two or three days to one a day to two a day to four a day to the whole day. And when I wasn't having them, I feared having them. This is what they call um, agoraphobia. I think it's where you're scared to go outside, you know, because like I was scared if I went out there. I'd have a panic attack in an environment that I couldn't control. 
Uh-huh. In the room, at least I controlled where I had the panic attack. Mm. You know, when if I was at a restaurant and had it, you know, it was very inconvenient because we'd sit down, me and my wife get ready to order, boom, I'd have a panic attack, wouldn't be able to take the food, we'd have to get it to go and go home. Mm-hmm. You know, and this happened over and over and over. It was really hard on her too. And Jenny you know, was, was, how did she support she, she that, was, man? She was a trooper. You know, she was obviously a she was that. a trooper, but mm-hmm. how did she deal she with was like a trooper. if you're saying thirty times in a row, mm-hmm. Jenny's having to listen to you say baby i love you right, right, right. you know like i'm, da, I'm da, dying da, i'm right, dying yeah right so talk to me about what, what what's that like for for jenny it was tough and now what's it like for her now it was tough it was tough then i mean you know it brought it brought the good out and you know because when we go through the struggle it brings either the worst or the good out and it brought the good out she was a trooper you know really helped me um through that time there's not much a person on the outside can do when you're dealing with the mental aspect, like right. she couldn't get in there and hold my hand. But she fix still that, has to you know? like yeah. love you right, through right. that. That's what I mean. Right, like right, I know right. she couldn't convince you anything in your mind because um, my wife has, has struggled in the past, has struggled with panic attacks and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And when she finds like maybe like a, a lump on her throat, mm-hmm. she'll go and immediately get it checked out. And then before she'll even come home to tell me how it happened, she'll stop and get another opinion. And there's even been a time where she stopped and get a third opinion before she comes home. So she'll wow. leave at 8 a.m. I'm expecting her back at 9.30. She comes home at 4. So my point to mention that to you is like, I know that there is nothing that I can convince in her mind, in her mind, but my wife didn't have that happen for nine years and she's never said I'm dying, Mm -hmm. but I just felt in my spirit, like every time she's doing something like that, I just wanted to grab her and shake her and be like, it's nothing, but there's nothing that I can do that can convince her, uh, her mind. She went, my, my wife went through a struggle. Um, when we first got together that kind of prepared her and me and I, I didn't understand what she was going through until I started to go through it. Like six months after we started dating, we had an apartment down in Fort Lauderdale. I went to do a show and I left her at home because in that environment, you don't bring the No, nah, you don't bring your honey. No, nah, because in, 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 it, it's a it's a rough world. You know, they go after the things you love in the right world. You know, the gang life, you, it's if you're vulnerable. You know, it's yeah. like, so I try to protect that situation. Because well, you're no working way. and right. you can't be with her to protect her. It's right. like me bringing my wife to Philadelphia while we're playing the Eagles. They're going to know and she's going to get stuff thrown right, out. Right, exactly. You know I mean? They're going like, to take shots to yeah. get to you. Take her to the home yeah. game. That's yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna take shots at whatever you love, right? Mm-hmm. They're going to take shots at it. So I had um, left her at home when I went to do this autograph signing the show when we had a person a serial killer break in the house when i was when i was gone and he attacked her broke her jaw almost killed her basically you know he was he got spooked because she yelled really loud and she didn't pass out when her jaw was broke the doctor said she should have passed out mm. but she did and it scared him when, when when she yelled and he ran out of the apartment but he killed a guy um a woman the day before and the day after the break-in. So she was right in the middle. Wow. And both on both sides. And he was definitely with intent to oh, kill yeah, her. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like I said, the day before he killed wow. her. And he killed multiple, like, you know, 15, 20, whatever that they have him accounted for. But um, he got caught for another situation. And they tried to land him for this one, but there just wasn't enough physical evidence. But they had locked him up for these other two. And he went off for 20-something years, 25 years. But um, she struggled for five years with complete so depression, it, and all of that. So like, she loved that. you through it because right. of her experience. Right. Wow. So, but I would used to tell her like you, I'd, you know, she'd be down or scared, and I say, you know, just think positive. You know, right. this was my mentality. Was you know, everything was just gotta, you know, you now, can do it, and before, that doesn't work that's for that. Before you yeah. had gone through what you yeah, went through exactly, with your dad before you I tasted it was that Kool Aid. Yeah, I right. thought it was surface level, like you know, you just think positive, but I didn't understand the gravity of how this stuff will grab you at the core, and it's much deeper than the surface. You have to mm. deal down on an emotional level, and um. But God, when I when I reached out to him, he honored the prayer that I said, you know, if you heal me, I'll go out and tell people who, who did it. That's why on every one of my messages now, you hear me at the end, to God be the glory. I don't ever want to forget who got me out of that. You know what I mean? Because it's real easy um, to go out and everybody's praising you. Man, I love your stuff. I love your stuff. And to start to think, okay, yeah, I did this. Uh-uh. 
Because I remember what it was when I tried to do it. I was on that block and couldn't get off the block because my mind was gone. So I'm not going to take credit for that. That's all all him. And I want to make sure on each one of these messages that I do that I honor him. You for, do a for good job did, of that, know? man. I honor you for the way that you do it, man, for real. But the struggle's real. The struggle's real, man. And, you know, my brother-in-law, I mentioned it Sunday at the event, he hung himself, got on drugs. Um, My wife's brother. And I saw some of these things, man. And it just prepared me and molded and shaped me for the ministry mm-hmm. to do what I do, you know. So so that kind of brings us into ministry. And I feel like Connor's yeah. got a question, so rip it. Yeah, I just love, I love your story. Such a powerful story. And it's a beautiful story of how you've had to overcome so much in life. And like you were saying earlier, how the, the enemy was, the enemy knew the gifting that God put on the inside of you, but he wanted you to use that gift for his team. And I just love, like, you've walked through that, walked through even your dad being passing away and then your brother hanging himself. And you had to walk through a lot of stuff from the rapping world into the world that you're in now. And Steve and I were talking about the perseverance, one of the keys to your art of greatness, the point number seven, I believe. And I know our listeners would love to hear about a little bit of the art of greatness and just hear about, like, man, what are some of the keys that I can take into my life that can actually change my environment and change who I am to help me succeed in whatever I'm doing? Well, it all starts with vision. Vision Vision. first. You got to, whatever it is you want to build, you have to build it here first. You have to move your mind to that place. Mm. Where there is no vision, the people people perish. perish. Right? And Mm. that's, you you realize how important that is because we also know if you, if, if you sin, you perish. Mm. So he's saying a person without vision is pretty much sinning because you're going to perish too, right? Mm. So we need that godly vision in us, man. And when I was going through the panic attacks, the enemy had given me his vision. It was, you know, back in the hospital room showing my dad there laid out, gone, mm. you know, and seeing the transition and all that. That was like, this is what's going to happen to you. This is what the enemy was saying to me all the time. This is what I feared was dying alone and struggling mm. and not having any, you know, help. And people being all around you but you're inside alone and you can't you know um, do anything about it so God had to first give me a vision in order to get me back on track to help me um, start the restoration process and he gave me a verse every victory that we have every overcoming can be tied to a verse because the truth will set us free right mm-hmm. so he gave me a verse jeremiah 29 11 says for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you not harm you plans to give you a hope and a future see the enemy was saying you're gonna die god was saying no no, no i got a future for you mm-hmm. see i needed to hear that mm-hmm. i needed somebody to say no listen okay that's a struggle but god has got something for you mm-hmm. because after um he passed away i never really returned back to rapping and, and i had this big void not only could i not get over the panic attacks but i had nothing to move me forward you know to look forward to to draw me out mm. so god had to give me something that i would could move toward in order to move out of the of the mire right mm. so he he started to you know show that verse to me and when the enemy would begin to to you know start attacking me i would quote that that verse the vision i was like no i don't know what the vision is yet mm-hmm. but he took the first but step I know is that there's one right, exists. the first step is to know that you have one because see a lot of people in, in the world don't know they have a purpose here mm-hmm. they just you know what is it just randomness you know things that happen when they have no you actually have a purpose and a reason for being here there's something mm-hmm. that you can do that no one else can do and that's your value that's your gift to the world and we just have to figure out what that is and god gave me that verse to begin to unlock that process and then as i went on through through the years there, he began to point me to my calling, which is the, the speaking that I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. And um, and even when I first started speaking, I didn't know it was going to go to this. Mm-hmm. You know, I was speaking at a men's group at church, a little small, 10, 15 people on a Monday night. You know, I thought, okay, I'm just doing some, you know, charity work, doing some stuff for the church, you know, volunteer paying work. It, paying right. it forward. No, I mean, I loved it, but I mean, I wasn't thinking it was this big thing that, you know, God was going to send me around the world, you know, and do this. Mm-hmm. But um, he began to unlock that vision and started showing me, no, no, it's bigger, bigger than you think, bigger than you think, bigger than you think. And then the picture started, you know, assembling in my mind. And then I wake up, okay, now I know it's impact one billion people. You have a reason for being here. The struggle was for a purpose. Didn't make any sense when I was going through it. You know, you're out there for seven years, you're praying every single day like they tell you to do. You accepted Jesus and nothing's getting better for seven years. You start to say, well, Man, this I don't know about this, you know. Right. But um, looking back now, it all makes sense mm. because the enemy knew 
um, what the destiny was going to be. See, the greater the struggle, the greater the destiny. Is that how, so when you were talking, Connor asked a great question about the art of greatness, mm -hmm. which there's seven laws. Mm -hmm. Is that when you said, that's why I got into ministry, was that like the first thing you, that you created or is that something that over time in men's ministry you have constructed and now kind of like those laws are the way that you guide people through a process of their faith walk i yeah. guess for lack of a better word if you look at all the greats all the legends the bible stories the the you know regular everyday people that have achieved things you can trace the greatness or the successes back to those seven principles that I lay out in the order of greatness and the one is you know the first one is vision vision is what I call a vision is the genesis of all greatness it starts in the mind you see your your thinking your vision your mind will eventually collapse into an equivalent reality mm -hmm. so if I if I'm thinking thug drug violence bang gang bang all that my life is gonna collapse into that kind of mm -hmm. lifestyle right you know your, your thinking is gonna give birth to an equivalent lifestyle so God had to reprogram me and give me a kingdom vision, a kingdom way of seeing things, a kingdom um, filter. And once he gave me that, then my life started to to reflect that. Mm. And the second step in the order of greatness, you have, you know, you get a vision like what I'm doing now with the speaking. But then you have to have a mindset required to make that vision a reality. Mm -hmm. See, where people struggle is they, they get a vision like you'll see people dream big, but they never change their mindset. Mm -hmm. They got a local mindset with a global dream and that's not going to happen. You're living in fantasy land. So the, the mindset has to that we have to adopt must be equivalent to the dream that we're dreaming. So if you're dreaming NFL, your thinking must be the NFL. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't have a high school mindset trying to play in the NFL. Mm -hmm. You know, eight, yeah, you have to start right? making like when you're 14 years right. old, you are and it's more than even just mindset, man. You have to start making decisions as if you are that. You right. need to value yourself as you are a pro. And for like a lot of people listening to this right now, and for me too, I have to remind myself every single day that I have a purpose, that I have a mission mm -hmm. and, and recalibrate what my vision is. And a lot of people see the vision, they don't change the mindset and then they don't take the actions forward. Right. I don't want to interrupt you, right. but I was just kind of like piggybacking oh, off yeah. of mindset because like that's my jam yeah, that's, too, that's man. Right. And that's why I love the language that you speak and I love this this art of greatness and the laws because it makes it so simple to see tracing the qualities of what makes an athlete great it's mm -hmm. the same thing right you know what makes a speaker great same, same laws yeah what makes Universal. a dad great right. same seven right. laws what makes a great mom a great doctor mm -hmm. a great brother that's right a great it's universal friend. laws universal cuz right. it, it all going, starts please. in the mind I mean you know if you want a strong on fire marriage there's a mindset required for it mm. if, you know whatever trial or tribulation you're fighting there's a mindset required to overcome it Opportunity has a mindset required to see it. Abundance has a mindset required to attract it. Same thing with miracles. Miracles require a mindset to be able to receive them, right? If I don't think I'm worthy of healing, if I don't know there's a God up there who loves me and that's what, what he does, if I don't have that mindset, I will stay in bondage. But once my mind awakens to who God has made me to be, then all things are possible. And the, the mindset we have to adopt is with God, all things are possible. And if we get that mindset, we, we, we stop dreaming at the level of our own ability and to start dreaming to the level of our maker, which means all things are possible. No matter where you're at, you might not have a penny to your name, but with God, all things are possible, right? So you can go from prison to the palace. You know, this, the story of the dreamer, Jacob, right? So... We know God can do amazing things, you know. So it starts with vision, getting clear on what it is that you want in life. I had to get a vision for healing coming out of panic attacks. I had to see myself back normal, going out, not, you know, feeling in my body mentally, um, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching victory in my body. Being able to sit down at a restaurant and be like, babe, I hadn't had a panic attack in a week. I'd have those conversations in my mind before I ever actually had them in the physical. But I had them so many times in my mind that they began to give birth physically. You know, if, if, if you want to play in the league in the NFL, you've got to see yourself on that field. You got to see yourself kicking through, kicking that ball through the, the uprights. You got to see yourself running down that sideline. You got to see yourself making that tackle, throwing that ball, whatever it is that you want to do, basketball, football, entrepreneur, whatever it is, you've got to build it first in the mind. You know, and then as we mentioned, we move to the mindset. We say, what mindset do I need to adopt in order to be in the NFL, to, to be a, a 
healthy in my body to have an awesome marriage whatever it is what's the mindset required and you know the way we do that is we start studying the greats not their accomplishments but their thinking mm. you know it's like you know when i was in a rap game everybody studied um you know whoever was hot they would study their vehicle what kind of car that is what model that is what kind of chain it is instead of saying man how does that guy think mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying how does drake think you know, they want to copy his chain in the car. If you copy his thinking, you can have all of that. Just because you know his car never mean, doesn't mean you're going to drive in it. Yeah, but if I copy his thinking, his patterns, his discipline, his, his filter system, then I'm going to produce similar results. And that's what we have to do. Whatever it is we want to be, we have to find somebody who's succeeding in that area and study every aspect of their thinking right and it's then that'll good. give away see once you study the thinking you'll understand that every single one of these people that go to the next level the greats have an understanding that's different than everyone else that's the third step having that right understanding that you filter life through you know the best way to say it is who are you when no one is looking you know you go in the weight room and no one's looking are you still going 120 you know I remember back when I was playing you know high school boy I didn't make it to the next level like you but when uh, the summertime would be on, the coaches had limited access to us. You know, we'd be in the weight room and the coaches would come and, oh, here come coach. Boy, they're getting it yeah, in, right? They're getting it in. in. Yeah, <laughs> put some weight on there. And as soon as that coach left, man, this is like they laying around right. talking, not doing any work. I mean, that that's not next level. Mm -mm. You know, the, the Julio Joneses, the Stephen Currys, the LeBron James, the Michael Jordans, the Tom Brady's, these guys go harder when no one's looking. Than they do when people are looking, mm -hmm. you know, because they know that's where you know the difference is. You know, their standard. What's the inner standard that you you must put in place to be who you want to be? Mm -hmm. The inner standard will reveal the true identity of a person, mm -hmm. right? right? Mm -hmm. You know, I mentioned this Sunday. I saw this clip of uh, Derrick Henry, the running back that mm -hmm. just won the mm -hmm. rushing title, when he was at the University of Alabama his junior season in the summertime. I saw this video clip on YouTube where he had this, he had these straps on and he was pulling this truck mm. around the track, full running with pulling a truck all the way around. And he was doing this lap for lap. And I'm like, who's going to stop this guy? When what? he gets the ball in his hand, no one's going to stop him. Mm. I mean, he broke 2,000 yards, you know, he, he won the Heisman that year, broke all the records. And I remember after the Auburn game, he ran like 40-something times in the game. And the announcer was like, are you tired? Because they kept trying to say that uh, Nick Saban was, you know, work, running working, yeah, hard. running too hard. And and he was like, man, I, man, I'm ready to go. Like, we could run another quarter. Mm. And he wasn't gassing people up by saying that because he had been running in the summer. They hadn't seen this he stuff. He had been done. Yeah, because he, he was like, the game time was, man, that's the easiest part of my week. Right. You know, if the game time is your your, your your toughest time, you're not training. You don't have the standard of greatness, man. So you got to put that inner standard in place. And then number four is focus. Mm. I say this all the time. Uh, broken focus is the number one reason for failure. Because we could do just about anything we set our mind to if we can stay focused on it long enough. Mm -hmm. Right? I think the, there's a Bible verse I'll read it to you for this one it says let your eyes look straight ahead right at where you're going where the vision is right fix your gaze directly before you that's proverbs 4 25 see we have to stay focused you know if it, if it's the next next level the nfl and nba that you want to play in or if it's to be a, a millionaire entrepreneur you've got to keep that goal in front of you at all times because this world is full of distractions you, you you can't have two weeks on training and, and moving in the right direction and then next week something come up and you you, you you break your discipline down and you're not not doing the thing that you called to do and, and two or three weeks go by and now you have to start back over you're giving back all your gains mm. because two weeks you lost focus mm. you know if you want to go to the next level these next level guys they do not lose focus mm. kobe jordan brady they 24 hours a day 365 days a year mm. that's it they don't lose focus so if you want whatever it is you want to do, you've got to have the, you know, that focus on if you want a solid marriage, then you got to put the time in and say, OK, I'm going to focus on the marriage. You, you can't spend one hour a week with the wife and expect to have an amazing a marriage. That's, it just doesn't work that way. You know, so like these laws that we're laying out, they work for anything. You hear me saying marriage and, and sports, but it's anything that um, that you want to do in life. These are universal. And then number five, this is a raise the men from the boys. It's grind. Mm. Mm. Your work ethic. 
Talk to me. See, work ethic is your transportation. Where is your transportation taking you? Where's your vehicle taking you? You know, you can't have a high school work ethic trying to be in the NFL. Mm. The, Julio Jones had an NFL work ethic in high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why he started day one when he hit the University of Alabama. Day one, he started. And, and freshmen just didn't start on the Nick Saban. Mm -hmm. Very seldom. But he said, this guy was training like the NFL when we saw him in high school. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's what we have to do. We have to raise our, raise our grind up. You know, that's going to produce the kind of life that we want. You know, the blood, sweat, and tears is the only credit cards accepted Come here. On, Charge it to the grind. Charge you can't, grind. you can't buy greatness with Bitcoin. I know Bitcoin yeah. is an amazing technology. Come on, preach. It's, yeah, you, you, you feel me? Preach. You can't outsource the work ethic and the grind. Mm -hmm. There's certain things you can outsource, but this right here, there's certain things that you've got to do if you want to be great. Like you got those arms, you couldn't outsource the push-ups. You couldn't outsource the curls. You had to do it. I tried. Them. Yeah, you tried. We all do. We, 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 you know? That's right. Yeah, you, you can't do it. I thought there it. was a secret. I thought there was a pill or a powder, but it wasn't until I focused on it, kind of like going back to the, to the last law, it was I obsessed on it, and that's what people – would would look at it as it's like when you obsess on something it's obsession to somebody else but to somebody that's locked in on their goal it's not obsession at all it's focus right, um, right so right. that that was just a kind of small segue i didn't have big arms when i played in the nfl if you go back and look at any of the footage from my nfl career i had long sleeves on in every single game if i played in tampa bay and it was 100 i wore long sleeves because i I was the fittest man in the NFL, but I was really self-conscious about the size of my arms, so I wore sleeves. Mm. Um, but then when I retired, I got obsessed to try to like vindicate the one thing I couldn't improve, and that was the size of my arms, and so I got completely obsessed on it. So anyway, that was my story on obsession and like how people will call it obsession. Right. It's focus, man. That's right. It's focus. You made a good point there with the sleeves on, you know. That doesn't just apply to the arms in life. Mm. Maybe some of the people that are watching this, where are you wearing sleeves? Mm. You know, where are you insecure? Right. Because right? the enemy is going to attack these areas that we're mm. insecure in. He's going to, until we deal with it, he's going to continue to have rain. Mm. You know, we have to face this stuff head on. And um, the grind, though, that we're speaking about here, if you look at all these greats like Mark Cuban, he worked seven years straight with no vacation. Mm. Now he can take a vacation whenever he wants to. Mm. You know, Elon Musk usually works a hundred hour week. Mm. Hundred hours. Most people complain about forty. He's working a hundred. He says, But I can accomplish something in, you know, three months time that takes everyone else a year because I'm out working on three times a week, mm. you know. And Stephen Curry every single day got up, took five hundred, three three point shots every single day. Now he throws those things up. That's why he's throwing them up so easy because he's done it thousands and thousands and thousands of reps, man. They say it takes 10,000 hours to master something. And I, I like to go a step further, 20,000 hours to become I'm a, a legend at it. I'm, I'm going to agree with you because I've done, I've punted a football and I've lifted weights and we quantified the times. Mm -hmm. It's over 20,000 at both, mm -hmm. but I still wouldn't say that. I've mastered it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right, right. And so that's just like a figurative term that like you have to do at minimum right. this. Yeah, that just I've gets been, you in the game. That right. Just, that that mean like you, punches yeah. your ticket yeah. to get into the arena. That right. doesn't even put you on the floor. Right, right, you know what right, I mean? right, right. There's 20,000 to get on the floor. Oh, you want to play in the game? Well, I'm talking 50,000. So next right, time right, you speak, right, right. you could take it from somebody oh, that yeah. said, it's more than 20. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> or maybe I'm just a slow, I mean, a slow I, learner. I mean, you think about the greats. I mean, you know, the LeBron's going out there, but look at who he's facing. He's facing somebody else that's working 20,000. Like mm. you said, so even though you, mm. you got 20,000 20, will get you there. Right. It's not going to keep you there. Now, now what's, what's going to yeah. beat the other guy that put 20,000 in too? Exactly. exactly. 21,000, or is it going to be 20,000 with a higher level of focus with a higher level of obsession with a higher level of grind like getting more right. out of that right. and that's what i believe like sometimes when people hear grind they're like well i'm looking at my life i don't have any more time to grind and like hey i get it well if that's the case and you only have this much time in your life you better find a way to be more intentional mm -hmm. and more strategic aka get more roi get more juice for the squeeze because you don't have more time and you don't have more oranges Amen. but you want more juice and, and some people hearing us say you know, work a hundred hours sounds crazy through maybe their filter that they're they're seeing their life through. Because 
the only way you can do 100 hours at something like this is is to be doing what you're passionate about, what you're called to do. There's not that yeah. much coffee, bro. Yeah, right. You know, if you're doing if you're doing 100 hours but you hate your job, that's not going to make you successful. Mm -hmm. You know, at least not long term. You you're going to burn the body down because the thing we have to do is get in our calling. We have to figure out what God has put us here for because that's the that's area good. that we're going to be the most successful and the most effective, right? So what people are trying to do is They've traded in the passion and the call and the thing God called them to do to pay the bills, the mm. you know the paycheck, the pay, you know the job just above, just over broke, mm. and w what that causes, which I cause is, is probably the n number one problem in society today. And this sounds crazy, because no one ever speaks about it, but I believe in my heart that ninety percent of the world is out of position. Mm. Tell me more. And one position, if you're out of position, affects every other position and everything else around you has become chaotic. Mm. So if you got 90% of the population doing jobs and things that they were never designed to be, and we wonder why everywhere we look, it's chaotic. Mm. Come on I, now. I agree with right? you. I, I just always refer to it as a different term. They're out of order. Right. Meaning they're out of position. Right, like out of position. Say because the yeah. reason that you hate your life isn't because of anything else other than you're not where you're supposed to be. You're not where God has called you to be. Right. And and see, it comes back to this. Right thinking sustained long enough will eventually bring peace and order to any situation. Mm, order. See, we have to have the right thinking. Right thinking is God made us for a reason. God, we're not a mistake. We have a purpose. We have a calling. And see what it is. We, at, maybe at certain times we don't trust in God. Our level's not there yet. We don't trust in God to take care of us financially. So we, we do something else and try to do it on our own. And we get caught up in a life that we were never designed to live, mm. to be in something we were never designed to be, mm. right? So we're talking all this stuff. And if, if you're out of position, some of this stuff is going to sound crazy or maybe not realistic. Like, why would I do 100 hours and they don't treat That's me good now, you good know, point, at this man. job? So the point. thing is to ask God what he's called you to do. And get up every single day with that extra time and work toward getting to doing that full time so that you can do the thing that you love. And when you love, like when you, you mentioned the speaking, the three and a half, I love speaking. I don't look at the clock. Frankie has to weigh me down and say, bro, it's five o'clock. You got to that's stop. So you know what I mean? Because that's the way it is. When you're doing what God's called you to do, you light up and you have this other level of energy, mm. this passion and this thing that sets you apart mm. from everyone else. When Babe Ruth had that bat in his hand, man, you just knew this is the thing this man is called to do, mm. right? When when Tom Brady has that ball and it's the fourth quarter, this is what this man was called to do, mm. right? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the greats, you can tell that they have found their thing and they're in the center of it. Mm. And each one of us has that thing. Maybe it's not football. Maybe it's, you know, computer programming. Maybe it's being the next Mark Zuckerberg or the next Steve Jobs or, what, or whatever it is. Next Elon Musk, help us go to Mars. Whatever it is, you got to get in the center of your calling what God has designed you to do because that is the place that you're going to be most likely to be Come useful, on. effective, happy. Because see, look, if you're out of position, you're 100 times more likely to be divorced, 100 times more likely to be overweight, to be sick. Because why? You, you're having to use energy in your body that, to do something you weren't designed to do. So you're putting strain because Fighting. you're not really gifted in that area. Fighting the right. system. Right, right. You're not really gifted. So if you're not really gifted in that area, you, you're going to be at most good. Which means you're going to have to put more hours doing something you weren't called to do to put just more to strain on the body just to be good. Mm. Right? But when you're in the center of what you're called to do, mm. it's easy. Now, there's still a grind to it. Right. But it doesn't feel like all day you're fighting against well, it, the grain. It's you not know? hustle. And it's to me, it's not hustle and grind. And it's not even work. It's like it's purpose work. Right. You know what I mean? And so when you get up every single day and it takes time, and this is what I, I really want people to hear because I love what you're saying of like, dude, I'm not working 100 hours. Like when I hear something like that, I don't want to work 100 hours. But if it's in my calling. Yeah. You know what I mean, and that's and that is if you don't have something that you could work, you know, 60 hours on you're probably out of order. Right, you know, right, You're right. out of position. Out of and position. then when you get into the center of it, that's when it doesn't become hustling and grinding anymore. That's when it becomes the purposeful work. Right. That's good, man. You, you got to find the thing that, you got to find the thing that you can't wait for the alarm to go off. Mm. You got to find the thing that you hate to cut the light off at night. Mm. Like, I hate it. When I'm in there recording, I'm like, man, it's 7 o'clock, I got to cut it off. Man. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm mad because I could do this thing. My, my wife would tell me, like, you know it's 7.30, right? You've been screaming up there for 12 hours on <laughs> the mic. Screaming up there. You know, because, <laughs> but I'm like, it doesn't seem like it. It seems like it's been an hour, two hours, and it's the sun is coming up. Mm. 
you know because that's you know that's what it is when when you get in the center of your thing it's time begins to cease where God is right I was is and always will be right time don't exist so when you get in the center of your call that's the closest you can be to God that's why the time fall, fades away Ooh, and, and you're just doing your thing and you're, and you're in relationship and what I what I what I call it is burning keep burning mm. and you're doing the thing you love you'll burn away everything in your life that doesn't belong I like that right? term way better than grinding I feel like so many like millennials use the yeah. word grind and yeah. I'm like I feel like the, it's like sacrilegious like mm -hmm. you can't use that word because i know you don't you don't work know hard. what it you is know what I mean? you right. don't know what it is so it's almost like i almost want to come up with a different word because they're ruining the word grind you know what <laughs> polluting I mean? it yes, i like polluting. burn dude burn. You i like burn. burn because burn means like something is giving you the flame right and every and i love the analogy of what you just said of everything around you that's not supposed to be there mm -hmm. they can't handle that temperature right it gets burned Ooh, right. i like that and, and you that's know, my new you, word connor if, some people listening burn. might just be starting out and in, into something, not have the resources, mm -hmm. not have the team, not have the staff. And God revealed to me some of these principles that we're given out here today. And one of the things I live and stand by is John Wesley, a great evangelist, mm -hmm. said this. He said, set yourself on fire and the world will come see you burn. Right. So I bought into that. Cause when I, in the beginning, I had no resources coming out of the panic attacks, coming out of, you know, losing all the money, all that stuff. And then God lit me up in this thing. And I was like, I don't have any resources, no team, nothing. All I have is me. But that's enough. If I go 120, set myself on fire, God will take care of the rest. Because people today seek the fire. As I was saying before, 90% of the people are out of position. So when they see somebody in position, it's so attractive. Oh, I want what they got. And they want to come see what it is, right? You, you, you can and tell. they get pulled. They out get of pulled to you because out of yeah, a person that knows who they are, has clarity, becomes magnetic and begins to attract things around them. And the whole world begins to uh, orbit around clarity. So the more clear you get, the, the more opportunities will begin to circle into your life. More people will be drawn into your That's life. That's good, Billy. You know, the way I learned this, what I'm doing today, I got to ask on a, on, a, on a Monday night to do the men's group. Yeah. Now, I went to ministry school a couple of years before that. Went to college, got my degree. I went to college not to be a pastor, but I went to college to find my healing. Because I knew in the, in the word that, you know, God said he healed. And I knew, I took him at that word. I knew God doesn't lie. But I was going to, you know, church every week and I wasn't getting any better. Wasn't getting any better. So I knew this wasn't wrong. My understanding was wrong. Not this, right? And I must not be getting the understanding of some kind of way that can fully access this. So I went to ministry school thinking, well, they'll take me deeper and I'll figure out what it is. I was trying to do it logically, right? So a couple years later, the guy knew I had been to, to, to Bible college. So he was like, hey, can you teach this Monday night? And I was like, no. <laughs> Uh-uh. Get up there and talk for an hour and a half with no music. Like, like I'd right. been in front of 20,000 people, but we had an entourage. We had dances. We had and all you're that. by yourself. Yeah, I'm by stage. myself. And I'm speaking to all ages, too. I mean, you're talking 18 to 80, and these people know the word. And I'm like, sitting up there going, no. Disqualifying yeah. yourself like I was a like, mother. I'm not qualified for that. Right. You know? And, and I didn't see myself doing that. And I also still had that stigma and that mindset that, you know, to, to be a pastor, you had to have be a certain way, you know? You know, with the suit, and you had to live th this way and that. That way and all the you know the ritual stuff you know i didn't really see that what you know being a minister and a leader was about power. yeah i didn't see the power so this guy asked me he's like can you come teach monday night and i did everything in the world to fight him off no 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 no, no. not me not me not me not me he kept on kept on kept on kept on finally i said okay i'll do it so i spent about 10 hours that week studying because I, I would study like 10 hours to do an hour and a half presentation so i get up there that night and i'm nervous remember the first night I get up there and I say God still moves the first thing I say just like I do when, yeah. when I come in and it was like the fire lit up in me it's like you know when you have a grill you hit that you, you turn the gas on and you hit that button and then boom that's what it was like it was like a, a bomb went off on the inside of me explosion and I was like oh what is this like I, I mean I felt different I'd been on the mic for 17 years but I had never felt that yeah, that's what I'm, that was the difference. See, I, I was in my calling, but I didn't have that burn. Boy, God lit it up. And, and when I said it, the people, because I'd been sitting in this men's group for seven years, and everybody just kind of like this little kid here, you know, at the men's group, nobody knew. All of a sudden, anointing came on. It was like, 
who's that guy? And even I was saying, who's that guy? Because it wasn't me talking. So I'm sitting there and I, I talk for two hours, an hour and a half. <laughs> thing. I talk for two hours. And when we get done, we, we hang out another hour after in the parking lot. You know, on a Monday night, we there till 10, 10, 30. That doesn't happen in the men's group. Uh, it, you know, most people in one hour and they back the home. Yeah. Hey, babe, I'm home. I went. Yeah. So I come home. I tell the wife, I'm like, whoa, you don't know what just happened. I talked to her for an hour. I was like, this is amazing. I was so high. Like, you know, the right. anointing had hit me. Yeah, I was so yeah. high. So, but I, 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 I begin to rationalize and, and, and use my logic, like, you know, because I was seeking my call and I was seeking my purpose, but I was like, you know, I was seeing everything through Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. I don't know if you know this. That in 2001, I adopted the, you know, his um, financial philosophy, you know, having multiple streams of income, not working for a paycheck, all these kind of things. So I brought that into that. I'm like, is this really a call? And I was like, I don't like, only people I know do this, work for a church, get a paycheck. I was like, I don't really have any desire to be a part of that. Like, you know, politics and stuff with a child. And this, you know, so I dismissed it. I'm like, okay, this is just volunteer work, community work, you know? So next week, guy go, comes back, he's teaching like normal. A month later, he asked me again, hey, can you, can you, can you fill in? And I'm like, okay, you know, I'll fill in. I wasn't, you know, fighting him this time. But I still hadn't woken all the way up. I get up there the second time. God still moves. Boom. Again. And I'm like, man, and they, and the, they fired up. The, everybody in the room is fired up. It's a different circulate, you know, different fire circulating the room. And I was like, this ain't normal. I know that I've been around greatness and, and music and all I was like this ain't normal Some, God energy. has got something in this but I don't know energy. what it is yeah. yeah so I ended up a couple months later he asked me to teach the whole summer because he wasn't he wasn't gonna be able to, for the summer and I, then I my mind got back to you're gonna have to come up with 13 lessons for an hour and a half how you gonna do that you're not qualified you don't know enough to you know all the the negativity stuff but um I went ahead and I said, okay, I'll do it. And my entrepreneur mind kicked in and said, okay, well, that's 10 hours a week study times 13 weeks. That's 130 hours for this. That's a lot of time. So my entrepreneur mind was, well, how can I package this stuff up that I'm doing? So what I did was, I said, you know, it had been in my spirit for a while to write this book, Blessed and Unstoppable. So I was like, why don't you just take all the stuff you're teaching in the summer and all this prep work you're doing put and put it in the book assign it in a way that people can outside of this um, men's group can use it mm. so that's how it was I, born, and that's right? how it was born right that's out a of powerful that. resource yeah. too. god and is I, good i would love to talk about that because i'm sure a lot of people on here are like dude you're right billy's the jam where where can we get more of him obviously it's on it's on youtube but i think a actual physical resource that you can go step by step is a really powerful resource for to be able to offer them and the reason being and then i want you to talk about it is we had a conversation about the church closing i don't want to open mm -hmm. that back up because right, that's right. a whole another conversation but churches in general are really really effective and really really focused at getting people to accept jesus and then you say like they leave them at the altar mm -hmm. meaning like where do they take them once they've made that decision because yeah that was the mission of the church but then also another assignment of the church is to raise up kings right, and right, ra you right, know right, right. and so my point to mentioning all that to everybody listen to this and i'm not doing this for a plug you guys know i love this guy um and i and i stand on everything that he says but this is a really powerful resource if you're looking for a resource and guidance for 31 days right mm -hmm. 31, 31 days. day devotional that is going to unpack this these seven laws that we're mm -hmm. talking about and make them really i guess the best word that i would say because my son and i love this book is digestible you know, I mean, my son is 12 and I'm 37. I've done some really radical things, but those things never made me feel good about the person that I am. It always made made me feel good about the skills that I had and the things that I could do with my body or, or as an entrepreneur, but they never made me feel good about the person that I am. And inside of Blessed and Unstoppable, this 31 day devotional does allows people to not only like see their vision, but also to see their value. And I think that's so hard for people to see vision for themselves if they don't see value in themselves. And so I just wanted to share one of my personal kind of like personal breakthroughs reading that book 
for myself and it's going to be a different breakthrough for different types of people when they read it but there are breakthroughs for each person inside of those those pages and my personal breakthrough was just seeing the value in the person that i am not just the value that i bring right we have we have to buy into that verse uh, if we want to be used by God and if we want to go to the fullness of our capability that he's put in us, we have to buy into that, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm, that, you good. know, God doesn't make mistakes. What we see as flaws are the, the beauty and perfections of the master. And, you know, like my gold teeth for, you know, a long time when I got out of rapping, I'm like, ah, oh, this is going to affect my ministry. They're not going to see me the same way. God would send me right to the people. Then the only people they would take it from was somebody with some gold teeth. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't take it from somebody with right. a suit and tie on when I go into prison. Mm -hmm. You know, they say we got enough of those guys. We need somebody that understands where we come from. Right. right. So the thing that held me back so long was that I didn't see myself accurately. I didn't see myself the way, you know, God saw me. And I saw those things as falls instead of seeing them as strengths. You know, if you're out there watching today, what is the strength that you have that you have labeled right now as a weakness? Mm. For me, mine was being like really sensitive, you know, like a pro football player. And so that's something as a high school athlete you suppress because you don't want anybody to know that like you're sensitive and like empathetic right, you know? so right. that was a weakness for the longest time so when you're talking about like what is that insecurity you have like what are this what are your sleeves over you know when we talk right, about my right, sleeve, exactly. what are you putting sleeves over and for me for the longest time it was my sensitivity and now as an adult 37 year old man now i believe that is one of my greatest gifts in in influencing and leading other people is like it's not a grind for me to imagine what life would be like in somebody else's shoes if I have an opportunity to speak with them. And what better way to lead someone if you can imagine what life would be like in their in their shoes. And so to circle that back to what you were saying is like for the longest time, I suppressed that thing about myself mm -hmm. and never exercised it because a gift is something you still have to exercise and you still have to practice it. Right, and right. you're going to just because it's a gift doesn't mean you're not going to fail at it. It just means those failures are going to lead to progress faster than any other things that you're doing and so i just wanted to share that personal note on me when you asked that question i thought to myself that's it for me that's like my x factor vulnerability it, it, you know i used to see it the same way coming out of the rap world vulnerability was a weakness Man, major. you can't show any any no. kind of feelings or emotions and, and it's kind of contradictory because we're in a music and you know at this time i'm in a music world where vulnerability is actually rewarded but it's my mindset of the street is suppress it so those were a constant war all the time and the best songs that that i did that were most successful um were rooted in authenticity and vulnerability you know which i very seldom showed in the early age because of you know being scared to show that side you know what you were mentioning about the church earlier too about um the church leaving us at the altar as i was speaking to you outside about it there's a difference between telling people about the cross than empowering them with it. Mm. And that's, I think, my mission as far as with the ministry is to help empower those with the word and bring it into everyday life so they can understand, you know, this book has all the answers. We just need to figure out how to use it in everyday situations. Right. How to and, apply the promises. And, right. And most of the time, the modern church does not teach it that way. They're too busy teaching about the, you know, the four horses or the trumpets or the seals. And you're like, okay, I understand that's a part of life. And it's but how do I apply that to my marriage when the verge of divorce? Mm. You, you know, you know what I mean? Like I understand the horses. Yeah, I understand all that. But I got real situations. I'm in stage four cancer. Mm. I need to know how to fight. Mm. I need to know how to take this word and invite God in and get on the attack. You know what I'm saying? And and the modern church has got away from that kind of teaching and got into some things that make us feel good, but do not really prepare us for war. Do you understand? A hundred percent. And we're war. That's why I say we're war. That's my calling is to develop warriors of that word, the David part of that word. You know what I mean? We we got to have the forgiveness and the love side, but there's also to go out and build the kingdom. We have to build. We right, got, and, and sometimes we have to seize, right? Yeah. The, the early days of Israel, they had to go in to seize things, and God has given you so much these mm. promises, but we have to go out and seize them. Mm. Hey, dude, are we doing volume two? We got, we got, we got to do a volume two, man. This is so good. Um, but before we do volume two, we're just gonna we're gonna get on your schedule for another couple of weeks because there's so many topics that I want to discuss with you, and so much value you can bring these guys. Um, 
Dude, I honor you, man. Dude, thank God you so good, much man. for for being here. It's been here. a blessing, brother. Thank you for sharing of yourself and driving all the way from from LA to be here. And I definitely want to make sure when we talk about resources, blessedunstoppable.com, I know is a place where they can get the book. Um, on and, the tour and, too. If I don't know where your people are, but we're coming dude, they're to all cities over, all man. across the United well, States, and we're going to Europe after. Yeah, right now um, we'll be going to 20 cities between now and the end of the year. So we'll be coming uh, probably to a city near you or close by, guaranteed. And October 25th, we 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 putting our feet down in Europe. We're mm, taking wow. the message, blessing unstoppable cool. to London. So we, this is the first time we'll be off the off the mainland here and and, Come and on, headed man. to, Go bring to it. Europe. Yeah, God is good, man. He's gonna take this thing uh, worldwide. He put the vision in me to impact positively one billion people. Well, good, so man. we get up every day and we burn. We have the vision. We get the mindset. Come we get on, the man. focus. We had a grind. We had a discipline. And as you mentioned earlier about the perseverance, man, we're going all in. And God's going to show up and show out because that's yeah. what he does. And, and speaking of perseverance, this is the 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 verse that he seared into my brain. And I'm, I've memorized it. Do not grow weary in doing good, friend. Due, Due season. season. You will reap if you don't give so blessedunstoppable.com um it's at billy allsbrooks the number one on instagram youtube it's dr billy allsbrooks just billy allsbrooks yeah billy allsbrooks youtube.com forward slash billy allsbrooks okay good and we'll put all of the all the links in the show notes um but i would love for you to pray us out of here man oh let's do it let's do it lord god i just i just give thanks for this opportunity that we've had here today to speak to your people lord i pray over each and every single person who's listening right now may you move them to the center of their calling lord may none be lost may all accept you and have eternal life in your son christ jesus and may you empower them with the word of god so they can use it and be a candle for your kingdom lord may you usher in heaven on earth now in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey guys, thank you for listening to another episode of the Steve Weatherford Show. And I couldn't be more excited to build on what I've done in my life, to share my experiences with some of the most amazing people, to give you the mindsets and the actionable steps to level up your life and live a high performance lifestyle. Now, if this episode impacted you, there are a few things I need you guys to do right now that would be a massive support to us. First, we need you to subscribe to the podcast in iTunes or wherever you listen to it. Um, and we wanna make sure that you're getting every single episode as soon as it drops. Second, I need you to join the movement over at weatherford5.com backslash podcast where you can get the show notes and links to everything else on the episode and lastly tag me on instagram with your key takeaway as i'll be checking every single post i'll talk to you guys next time and for now keep living a high performance life the struggle is real but you know you were meant for more that dream is on the inside of you just won't shut up because you know you were meant for more you've always been different they never understood you they've always doubted you because you're different but you know something that they don't know you know to be successful you gotta follow the masses you gotta be different and you are bold enough to be you you've always been different success ain't for everybody B7, you clothing. Wear your identity. Blessed and unstoppable. Success starts with putting the right things into your mind. And my new book, Blessed and Unstoppable, was strategically designed to align your mind with the laws of success. This curriculum will teach you the inner mechanics required to go from average to phenomenal. From living a life with limits to being blessed and unstoppable. As you follow this guide step by step, amazing breakthroughs will happen. New doors of opportunity will open and favor will begin to chase you down. Blessed and Unstoppable is a 31-day devotional on the laws of success. This book will instigate the thought process and actions required to transform your life. Each day has a Bible verse, a teaching on that day's principle, a positive affirmation, a prayer for the day, self-assessment questions, success quotes, action steps, and a powerful inspirational message. Regardless of what field you're in, Blessed and Unstoppable is your blueprint for success. Get your copy at blessedunstoppable.com. Also available on Amazon.